All right, guys, I have my batch here that I'm gonna start. This one I am calling Delicate Flower. You'll see why in a second. I'm gonna take my temps, it's 90 degrees, and my lye solution, 87, perfect. I try to have them within 10 degrees of each other because the times that I have not, I have a hard time with uh, my batch seizing up and I don't want that. So I found that the closer in temperature they are to each other, the better. All right. All right, so my fragrance oil today, I've actually mixed my colorant with because it's all one color and it's white. So I have my kale and clay in here. I have my fragrance oil, which is lilac and baby powder. It's two different fragrance oils from the Midwest Fragrance Company. And I have, I'm trying to think, have I worked with both of these before? I have used the lilac in soap, but I have not used the baby powder in soap. I've used it in a body mist. I loved it in that. But I've not used it in soap, so we'll see how this goes. When I lift my blender head out, and I drag it across, it should leave little trails or traces over the surface of the soap. It is fully emulsified, meaning the oils and the lye solution will not separate. But depending on what kind of look I'm going for or design I'm going to try, having a thicker trace or a thinner trace does make a difference. And sometimes I really want it really runny. Sometimes I want it really thick. This time I'm only doing a one color uh, soap, so I don't have an intricate design or swirl uh, set for this. So I really am fine with this being thicker. This didn't trace um, very thickly. It's not a thick trace. It's uh, fairly light, a light trace. So I think you should be able to see when I do that like that. Sweet. All right, and the spatula is a little bit hard to clean, so. All right, well, I am gonna pour this into the mold and then I do have some embeds that will go on top. It smells wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We have a running, uh, it's not really a joke, but uh, a thing we say in my family when we're feeling really tender or just really struggling emotionally or spiritually, mentally, whatever, we will say we're having a delicate flower day. And um, so I, I love the term simply because it means something to me, but um, also making a soap, this is really fun doing this. So I do have flowers that are gonna go on top, so I'm not gonna actually fill this to the brim because those flowers will display some of this soap. And I'm also gonna try for some little leaf uh, patterns on the top as well. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space and it's looking good, it's really thin still, so I'm gonna wait a few minutes and come back to do the embeds. All right, guys, so it's it's set up enough. I did put one in to just make sure that it was set, en set up enough to sustain the weight of the embeds. And as you can see here, hopefully you can see, I think you can see, yeah. Um, so I just set up a kind of a mock top so I could see where I could put them. This is not an exact um, amount that I'll be able to put on, obviously, because this liner is slightly smaller than this box that it sits in. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the big woo flowers in first. And that just kind of flew right in. So <laughs> I'm just going to, we're just going to work with it. It's going to be great. Still solid. It's solid enough to um, 
sustain it, but it's still liquidy enough to kind of push these into. And some of these flowers I have cut in half because they were uh, too big to fit where I wanted to put them. So there's a few of these flowers that I am just absolutely in love with and I want to make sure as many of those particular ones get onto this soap top and I can kind of clean that up you know tomorrow after I cut the soap we're just gonna this is so nerve-wracking sometimes to do this but gotta do it just gotta go for it I can feel it's warming up. So this piping bag, this amount of soap in here is going through gel phase and it is much, much thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start piping. <music> guys it's the morning all the kids are still asleep and I'm gonna cut some soap I am a little nervous about cutting this soap simply because there are so many melt and pour embeds on the top and I am NOT going to use my multi bar cutter because wire cutters are not a great mix for melt and pour. I do not use my, um, if I'm gonna make a, like a melt and pour soap and I need to cut it in some way, I do not use my multi-bar cutter because wires, like the wire cutters, were just not created to cut melt and pour because it's a lot more dense, a lot more solid than uh full process soap is so i was planning on using my um what you call it this thing here crinkle cutter it's still early in the morning i'm trying to find my words um crinkle cutter so this is a lot more solid than like single wires um it's a solid piece of metal so i'm thinking it should be okay I'm going to spritz it with some rubbing alcohol. We'll see how that works. Just want to... I have in the past, when I've had lots of melt and pour embeds on the top, I have in the past put my soap loaf in a low oven, like a 170 degree oven, for 30 seconds. Not so that the melt and pour embeds would melt, but that they would soften. That came out just like butter. I'm going to spray it with rubbing alcohol again, see if that works. Last time I did this with rubbing alcohol, the um, batch was still too soft, and so it just kind of squished rather than cut. And I don't want it to squish, I want it to cut. Well, this is working swimmingly. This is great. Now to get it out. Let's see if we can do it. Can we do it? Come on. All right, here we go. Bar number one. Sweet. That looks great. That looks great. 
I am a huge fan of bright colors and all that, but there's something so incredibly beautiful about a solid white bar of soap or a solid color. I mean, it doesn't even have to be white. It could be orange or purple or blue, but just a super solid color. I'm gonna just go like this and keep going because these are not wanting to slide out super easy. They are fairly hard. I probably could have cut this last night. Um, probably could have cut it last night, but I didn't. It smells amazing. I'm almost getting notes of almond. Like, I, there's, there's no almond scent in here, but with that baby powder scent mixed with the lilac, there's something just very lovely and creamy about it. Neither one of those is overpowering the other. It's not like, oh, I can't smell the baby powder because the lilac is so strong. It's, it's, it's a really good blend. They blended really well. And both of those fragrance oils, they're from Midwest Fragrance Company. Both of them have a lower usage rate. So I felt like adding them together was beneficial. I think it was a good choice. I've never blended those two before, so probably will in the future because it's a really nice blend. All right, a couple more to go. Let's see. Here we go. This was one of my first soap cutters that I ever purchased. And it did come with like a bench scraper, so a flat uh, blade. It's not sharp necessarily, but a flat blade. And then this crinkle cutter, I think I got it for $30 maybe. And it came with a couple other things as well on Amazon. And um, I use the box, I flip it over and use it for um, my pictures when I take my product pictures because it's a nice neutral background and uh yeah it's so pretty it's so pretty and I love I did add a little bit of um eco glitter on top it's clear so it's not like adding color to it it's just adding a tiny bit of sparkle which is lovely very lovely oh this is so beautiful come on yeah, and the rubbing alcohol is still wet on there, so it'll dry off and it'll create a nice shininess. Nice shininess to the bar. All right, guys, that's all I got for this batch. Thanks for coming along with me and watching how this was made. It was a fun batch to make. And I will see you again in the next video.